Hey guys, what up? In this newest video, what I want to talk about is 10 things that you should master in order to become a good web developer and especially a good JavaScript developer. And before we even get into that, you have to know that JavaScript is a programming language and that it is the universal language of the web. It didn't start off um, that way. It was invented in the 90s and then um, eventually became the, the, the standard um, that all browsers use as a programming language to be able to do things inside, you know, Chrome, Firefox, and Internet Explorer. JavaScript is currently referred to as uh, just JS, um, or Microsoft people will commonly call it uh, JScript. And the reason why is because it, it goes back to um, Microsoft having their own version of JavaScript, which they called JScript, and um, and then the actual standard that the uh, entire web community had built which is stands for um it actually is called ECMAScript which is spelled E C M A script and that's still what it's called to this day so um there's organizations out there that determine what it, are there going to be the new features in the javascript language when are those features going to be um supported and they try to make um they try to make sure that all browsers uh, heed to um, the standards that they develop. And the reason why is because even to this day, um, we've had major problems with every browser out there coming up with their own interpretation of how JavaScript should work. And uh, Microsoft has been notorious for, you know, basically not um, following in line with, uh, following suit with a lot of the standards that were paved along the way. Um, they would cite that, you know, they wanted the standards like basically written out uh, in writing and um, Chrome and Firefox were basically more adaptive to whatever the community was doing. And really the community is led by um, developers that develop the browsers as well as the developers that uh, write JavaScript for those browsers. So uh, for companies like Microsoft, I mean, they used to be able to drag their feet a lot easier. Um, but as we have moved forward into the future, Chrome and Firefox have uh, clearly overtaken IE. Um, and Microsoft's new Edge browser is uh, their their latest plan to try to get back into the browser market. But uh, they have a hard time competing and keeping up with the open source community um, that Google and Firefox embrace. Uh, so the bottom line, that, though, is that um, there was multiple versions of JavaScript. There still is. And every browser runs JavaScript a little bit differently. Um, and there's a lot of gotchas uh, along the way uh, that you're going to run into as a JavaScript developer. So... Just know that JavaScript is the language of the web, and we need to go ahead and um, inspect how it works. So the most important thing, number 10 on our list, is how does JavaScript work? So we're not going to go into the actual details of like specifically like bytecode and, and computer code of how JavaScript works. What we're more interested in is how do we actually get JavaScript to work within our pages? So this is a pretty basic, um, a basic thing that you have to learn, but when you first when you're first starting out you really don't know how JavaScript works so as an example here's a website that I built which is in bad uh, it needs repairs badly but for right now we're not gonna worry about how it's outdated and how I haven't been maintaining it we're gonna look at the the source code of the the page here and I want to show you an example of of JavaScript in action here so this uh, right here all your JavaScript is put into the actual HTML page and it's surrounded by these script tags. So that's the first thing you need to know with JavaScript, okay? So you can put the script tags right inside your your file and executes this JavaScript code. Um, the alternative is to actually link to an uh, external style sheet, which you can do by using the script tag, but then you're pointing to an actual uh, source directory where uh, a JavaScript file can be found. So if I click on that, you can see the web knows how to traverse itself to be able to find this file sitting on a server uh, and actually execute that. So JavaScript doesn't have to be written in between script tags. Um, they can be loaded externally like this. So this is a, a file of straight JavaScript code and it was just referenced as a script tag reference and then you also have what's called um, you know inline or in-page styles which is actual script code that's going to be uh, in between the two script tags and gets executed as soon as it's loaded in the page. So that's the, the two ways that, that you need to know how JavaScript works. 
All right, number nine on our list here is how to actually test JavaScript. And the reason why this is important is it can be a hassle sometimes to, to write JavaScript and have to reload your page and things like that. And there's tools because JavaScript is the language of the web and, and a language that can be executed within your browser, you actually don't have to even have a file in order to start writing JavaScript. So if you're just starting out, the best thing to do is actually go to a site where you can execute JavaScript without any sort of problems. And there's actually um, plenty of sites out there. One of them is uh, Plunker, uh, which I will go ahead and provide you guys. Plunker.co is uh, a really easy site that you can get started with. All you have to do is when you go to the main page, you say launch the editor. And over here, um, you can actually see it comes with a script tag, an external file. And um, the way I showed you guys before, you can actually just put a script tag. It doesn't even matter if it's in the body or if it's in... Um, the head it'll be executed and then you can just write some simple JavaScript right in the, into your browser and uh, test it out without actually having to save files load external files or anything like that so if I went ahead and I ran this application um, this little page you can see that it printed up the hello world and that's actually JavaScript code being executed and all you had to do was go to a third-party site there was no need to do anything else the other popular one that you're gonna find out um, on the web is uh, JS Fiddle, so you're going to see a lot of people are using um, JS Fiddle to, to create JavaScript and everything, so we're not going to uh, do that right now, but that's the other alternative. Uh, Plunker is really helpful because when you start dealing with other libraries, um, which we'll get into in just a moment, you can easily include them. You can do that as well with um, with uh, JS Fiddle, so it's going to be whatever sort of preference you have. All right, number eight on the list is how to use Chrome to your advantage. And what I mean by that is that Chrome has all the built-in tools that you need in order to be a uh, sufficient JavaScript developer. So if we go back to the site that I had, which is New Movies, I can actually, within my page right now, I can go ahead and right-click on um, the browser, say Inspect Element, and it's going to pull up this little this uh, actually is several different boxes down here and we're not going to get into all of them but if I go over to console the um, you can ignore this stuff and in fact if I want to delete that I could say clear console so I have this empty console and I can actually run JavaScript code right in the browser so just like I did before I could say um, I can write JavaScript right in and just execute it I can even use um, third-party libraries which we'll see uh, in just a moment but um, the bottom line, though, is that there is a lot of uh, a lot of tools inside of this Chrome Developer Tools that you can use to to really be able to um, evaluate your JavaScript. And one of those um, big important things is that you can actually step through your code using the deb debugger. So it's going to be really important when you're getting started that when you're looking at at something um, that you know how to debug it. So it it can be very difficult, but um, Chrome makes it a lot easier than it used to be. On the left hand side here you can see that there's all these folders and if I go into the JS folder I can um, look in something like uh, common which is currently open or if I just look inside this script uh, I can go ahead and I can set a breakpoint on any one of these and I'm trying to get a good spot here so I'm going to go into this index react So let's go ahead and just set a breakpoint, and we can do that just by simply clicking on any one of these uh, locations on the left-hand side. But you need to actually click on something that is actually um, hittable, so the the code has to be able to hit. So if I like stop it on the return statement, if I went ahead and I refreshed it, if this code executes, you can see it actually blocks. And right now we're in the middle of execution. So if I highlight any of these elements, you can see primary image uh, is currently null, so that variable that is primary image is, is null, but you can look at like this.state. State has a bunch of stuff like the box office. This is all stuff related to my website, but you can see actual code um, paused in its state uh, at any given moment wherever the breakpoint is hit. And then you can start um, traversing line by line by just pressing and what I so you have these uh, tools over here where you can step into the next function call, step out of. So if I stepped in, it's going to go ahead and it's going to go to the next execution. And you can see now it's actually going into a JavaScript um, library, which is called React. And a lot of times you don't want to do that, but 
Uh, Chrome has the ability to actually black box it so that it doesn't follow into libraries that are all uh, minified and things like that. So um, that's actually something that's beyond just a beginner tutorial. But um, the bottom line is that Chrome Developer Tools is going to be hugely important for any sort of JavaScript developer in order to to really be able to understand and um, and take uh, full advantage of, of what JavaScript has to offer. All right, number seven on our list is uh, the JSON syntax, which uh, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's not its own language or anything like that. It's actually a uh, semantic style. It's a it's a structure. It's it's very similar to something like H uh, HTML or if you look at something like XML. So it's not considered a full fledged programming language, but there are semantics surrounding it that you have to uh, abide by in order for it to be valid JSON. JSON um, back like five years ago was considering considered the darling of the web, and it's basically the um, ultimate way of having two different applications be able to communicate with each other using a similar uh, language. Um, back in, in the day, um, well not really back in the day, but you constantly have when you have two different applications or two different companies working on different code, um, they don't know how to communicate with each other effectively. So in order to solve that problem, the XML language was um, was established so that basically it's very similar to HTML and you have these tags that say, hey, there's a title tag, so title tag is a title. Here's a body tag, body tag is a body. Um, you know, product A is a product A or whatever it is. So um, that's what XML is. So it's these, uh, you know, cl open and closing um, items that, that contain data within uh, inside and it's it's considered a, a structured language that uh, is easy to follow. The problem with XML is that it can be um, bloated and it's not as fast um, and lightweight as, as uh, JSON and it's not built specifically for JavaScript like JSON. The reason why JSON is called JavaScript Object Notation is because it's built for the JavaScript programming language. So if I pulled up uh, J JSON Lint here, which is an online free uh, editor that you can use to actually validate your JSON, it's just a JavaScript object. So that's all JSON is. So a JavaScript object is an open and close curly brace. That's actually valid JSON. So if we went ahead and validated it, that's actually valid. And it's very similar to a dictionary, like if you've ever used Python. Um, there's key, and then separated by a uh, colon, and then value, and both of them should be in double quotes. And that's all it is. It's uh, just a key value pair. It gets a little bit more complicated, but you can see this is valid JSON. Instead of this just being a uh, string value, you can actually have it be its own JSON object with another key value. And then that would be valid JSON. Or actually, no, it's invalid because of our opening and closing braces here. It's invalid because the quotes there, my bad. So you can see that this JSON object has a key object that contains key value inside. So you can also have it contain like this instead of this being an object. So key is currently an object, but now we're going to actually say key is a list. And the list of, god dang it. Sorry, I accidentally erased it. But this could just be a list of strings. And you can see it's still valid JSON. So there's certain uh, semantics that you do have to follow in order for it to be valid JSON. But the reason why JSON is important is, like I said, it's, it's the language of. So JSON is very easy because you can see like on this uh, movie website that I have here, I have these these movies that are being loaded. And if we actually look at how that's taking place, um, what I'm doing is I'm actually making um, an AJAX call using JavaScript. And it, it's making a call out to a server on Google's uh, YouTube server. And it's actually pulling, uh, returning back uh, JSON, which is the exact same format that I just showed you guys. And then I'm able to parse it because I know how JSON works. So once you know how JSON works, you can just go ahead and parse that right into your program. And you'll you know easily be able to understand um, how to work with another company's API because they use JSON. 
All right, guys, number six on our list is what is Ajax? Um, so Ajax is the ability of being able to asynchronously make a call out to another server and update your web page without actually requiring a page reload. The reason why that's important is because users now are very accustomed to not having to load, but back in the old days, you used to have to go ahead, go to a web page, and if you wanted to see if there's a new news article or get you know an updated stock price or something like that, you always had a refresh. Nowadays, websites are able to dynamically update data constantly, like it, whether it's a commenting system um, or you know Facebook notifying you with a little red um, red icon saying that you have a new message. That's all done via AJAX. So AJAX is behind the scenes from your browser making calls out to either its server or some other company's server to pull down data and then update the web page without ever requiring any sort of page load. So it's a very uh, smooth, fast user experience. And that's actually what's being done here. So there's actually calls being made across the wire, grabbing a different movie, and then making uh, the display. Now just because I'm clicking next, you can see that the entire page isn't reloading. It's just this one particular portion of the page that's reloading. And the reason why is because I'm using JavaScript and Ajax and JSON to make that happen. All right, number five on this list is where to go to find answers to your questions that you're going to have. So you're, you're undoubtedly going to have questions whenever you start programming. A lot of newbies don't know this. This video series is uh, aimed towards newbies. Uh, but you need to know where is the most reliable information um, to go to find information on uh, JavaScript and really programming in general. And the answer to that question is Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow has every single question you could possibly uh, need um, well, not really. I mean, there's there's constantly questions, probably a thousand every day for JavaScript. JavaScript is one of the most uh, talked about languages on this site. You can see it; it's actually approaching uh, one million questions asked uh, in JavaScript. So, reason why, when you compare that to something like Python that has 488,000, which is a lot, and then C Sharp, which is also a very popular language, uh, has close to the same amount. But uh, JavaScript has definitely exploded in popularity, and there's a ton of questions. So if there's 971,000 questions asked by um, you know, everybody from the most experienced JavaScript guys to the least experienced, the chances are good that this website has, um, has those answers for you. So you typically want to search because, uh, like I said, mo in most cases they will have the answers that you're looking for. And the rare ca uh, cases that they don't, then um, go ahead and, and post a question. But you know, they are pretty harsh on people that ask uh, you know questions that are repetitive and you know for people that didn't do any research whatsoever to try to find uh, the answer to their problem. All right, number four on this list and arguably number one is um, who invented the JavaScript language. And the reason why this is important is just because anybody that actually develops something that's used essentially by almost every single person on this world um, deserves a lot of credit for you know being able to come up with with that. And the guy's name is uh, Brandon Ike. And I mean, it's, it's that's how I pronounce it anyway, but it might be Ike. Ike. But anyway, um, he he was a um, he was actually CEO of Mozilla for a short period of time, and he was actually uh, really torn apart in the media uh, for some of his uh, religious beliefs, which is actually messed up. For so for for all the people that you know have a certain belief and believe that everybody should believe you know what they want. The bottom line is that it is a um, you know, people should be able to believe what they want spiritually, and and this guy was, um, you know, I feel like unjustly just torn apart in the media and and had to resign as CEO of uh, Mozilla, which is uh, completely uncalled for in this society. And I feel like, um, you know, he deserves a shout out for this list as far as, you know, being somebody that that you know created one of the arguably one of the most important uh, pieces of software code. Um, in the history of, of really the uh, the web, and and for that reason, the history of the world. So. Anyways, a really smart guy um, was at Java, uh, at Mozilla Corporation for a long time, and um, and has been a champion uh, of uh, JavaScript for a very long time. All right, number three on this list is what is a JavaScript library, and the reason why this is so important is that um, JavaScript is a language that can easily be messed up. It's uh, very finicky. Every browser is different. Um, you could have a Chrome version. Um, that that renders something different in JavaScript compared to a later uh, or uh, newer Chrome version. Uh, Firefox doesn't render the same things as um, Internet Explorer, Ed, the new Edge browser. Some browsers update um, themselves, some don't. Some don't. Um, so 
the so you have to know what a JavaScript library is because the JavaScript library was made because JavaScript is such a hassle to get right. Um, the language itself isn't difficult, but just trying to maintain all those browsers and all the different code that you need in order for things to work um, correctly. Um, JavaScript frameworks uh, sprung up left and right, and they've been doing so um, for the last 10 years or more. And certainly of the last um, couple of years, we've seen just an explosion in the amount of uh, JavaScript frameworks, and a lot of them com um, accomplish the same goals, and people are very, very uh, particular about it. They're very passionate about their languages, and um, you know they could argue with you over, all day long over why React is better than Angular, or Angular is better than Backbone, or Backbone is better than Knockout. Um, you'll you'll they'll look at execution speeds, and they'll cite um, semantics or you know design philosophies. And the bottom line is that um, there are tons of JavaScript libraries, and you need to know what a JavaScript library is. One of my favorite new libraries that, have, that has come out um, of late was developed by the Facebook guys and they created their own framework which is just JavaScript code uh, that's written to work a certain way in order to keep things updated uh, in a web page. So like you can see, um, hello John, if I went ahead and um, you can see that it gives you like actual examples. Here. So if I went down here and I actually changed the code to Chris, you can see it's updating on the fly, and that's using um, something called a virtual uh, DOM. And the virtual DOM is actually able to update itself in multiple different locations because of the way the React code is written. So a lot of different things, like you can see the, the elapsed time, so like any sort of timers and countdowns, that's all working through JavaScript. React makes a very complicated thing much easier. So. So you can see they're doing a to-do list here. So there's a lot of different things that are really cool um, that you can do as far as um, you know making the web page dynamic. And uh, in the old days, uh, we had to write a lot more code than what React requires you to write in order to be able to keep things updated. Another popular framework um, that you'll hear a lot about is uh, the Angular JavaScript framework, which is um, more of a batteries included type framework that tries to do everything for you. Um, there's some criticisms there, um, but ultimately Angular is a very popular framework, um, and I would definitely need to mention it. But there's there's plenty of them out there. Um, they're all just JavaScript libraries, though, and that's why you know that it's uh, it's very important um, that you know what that is. All right, guys, number two on the list is uh, jQuery because jQuery is a library like we just talked about it at number three, but it is the most popular JavaScript library, and as much as people want to try to replace it and say that it's um, you know going to fall by the wayside eventually, J jQuery is still an absolute must. Every website I've ever seen is using it. Um, it makes very complicated things easy, and it's almost its own um, entire language of itself now. It's it's a language um, that's cross-browser, so it works on all different browsers because of all the JavaScript experts that have built jQuery along the way. And it's pretty much used in probably almost every single major website out there. Um, it's been developed so much over the last five or six years that, like I said, it's pretty much its own language. There's the jQuery way of doing things, and then there's the JavaScript way of doing things. Sometimes the JavaScript way is a, a very simple way, but people still do it the jQuery way just because jQuery is so common. So if you're going to be a JavaScript developer, you know jQuery is going to be one of the first places that you're actually going to want to jump into once you're ready to start using um, a JavaScript library. So when you start off, we're going to jump to number one. Um, but before I do that, let me go ahead and, um, and just give you guys uh, an example of what jQuery is. So jQuery can be found on its website, jQuery.com, and you can actually click to download the latest version, um, or you can actually view the source. All it's going to give you is an actual JavaScript file. You include it in your web page, like I showed you with the new movies website where you have the external um, source pointing to a JavaScript file, and that's all jQuery is. Once it's in there, you can actually use it. So if I go to Google.com, I'm assuming I'm going to be able to write... Um, jQuery code by going into the console like I showed you guys eventually and jQuery is used by using the dollar sign so I should be able to say um, just give me all all elements 
So you can see that that returned an array of all the JavaScript elements in a web page. So this is actually something called an XPath, which is um, something related to the XML that we talked about earlier. But what this is is actually using a, um, a jQuery to pass in an XPath, and, and even Google has um, the use of jQuery. So jQuery is working uh, within within their original or their their you know their single Google search engine page. All right, guys, number one, and um, hopefully you guys don't think it's lame, but number one, if you're going to be a good JavaScript programmer, and I, I've showed you those things along the way, you have to actually know where to start learning JavaScript. So there's several places that you can go, um, a lot of the websites. You can actually um, go to YouTube tutorials similar to the ones that I provide for, like Python and Django. There's plenty of JavaScript tutorials out there that uh, that you can learn from, from you know maybe people that fit your your style and uh, that you don't find annoying if you like the video presentation type of thing a lot of people learn from books so um, so if JavaScript books are your thing um, you can actually get one of these um, definitive guides to JavaScript which is going to teach you really all the basic semantics of, of JavaScript what is a variable what is a list uh, or an array um, how do I add things to an array how do I get, remove them how do I add and do multiplication um, it's going to teach you some of those basic things. I wouldn't spend it, you know, all day. Um, well, I would spend probably all day, but I wouldn't spend months trying to be like some JavaScript master. After you know some of the basics of JavaScript, okay, how do I include a file? How do I execute some code? How do I print stuff to the screen? How do I use variables and work with those variables? How do I build lists um, or arrays or anything like that? Um, and then once you get to that point, at that point, you probably just want to go ahead and start learning jQuery. So. Um, jQuery in Action is like one of the best books on jQuery, um, which as long as it's written by yeah this Bear Beaver guy, um, jQuery in Action this is definitely an, a solid book to get you started in jQuery. So um, once you have a, a solid gra solid grasp of jQuery, I think then it's time to go ahead and start moving on to something like uh, React JavaScript, which is going to be very easy for you. Um, React JavaScript is, is much easier than Angular in that you can use this with, um, with Django, ASP, Ruby on Rails, whatever you want to use for your web framework. You're going to be able to plug in React much easier uh, than you would something like Angular. So for all those reasons, um, you know, JavaScript is, uh, is definitely a great language to learn. It's a number one language in the web. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a, leave a comment. Please rate up the video and um, subscribe. And if you disagree with anything, uh, just let me know as well. And uh, I always try to respond to everybody if I can. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and have a good day. Bye.